Hey, what's going on, man? This is Dread Boy Films with Dread Boy ENT Facebook like page. And I'm also a director. And I'm here with a good friend of mine, um, the New York Jets Lockdown Corner, Darren Walls. What's going on with you, man? What's going on? How you? I'm all right. How you doing? I'm good. What's the difference between the New York Jets of last year and um, this upcoming season New York Jets team? Uh, I think the biggest difference for us, uh, we got you know Rex Ryan, who's a defensive guru, and he's more involved this year with the defense than he was last year. You know he coaches every position, so everybody know on a defense what every position is doing on every every different play. So you know I think in that aspect we all hold each other accountable. Uh, for making mistakes and um, you know we can hold each other up to higher standards and with that being said you know we lost a great corner in Reeves but we got a lot of good corners like myself who's, who's uh, upcoming and ready to step in and make plays. Okay okay so what can you as Darren Walls which I call D Walls <laughs> my boy, but, um, what can D Walls as yourself bring um, to, the, to the Jets and, and help them get to lead them to the Super Bowl this year? Well I think um, of myself as all around the corner you know, I feel like I can tackle, I can cover, play man to man, I can play zone. So, you know, whatever the scheme and whatever defense they call, I feel like um, I'm up to making, you know, the plays and the, um, you know, that's presented to me. You know, the coaches are going to put me in a good position to make plays and it's up to me to make those plays and I mean, I've been making plays all my life so it's, okay. it's just another, another day for me. Okay. So now, you know, this is coming up right, your third season, right? Third, year. third season in, um, in the league. So what's your progress as far as when you was a rookie up to now? Uh, I think the biggest thing for me was probably my confidence. Okay. Um, my first year I didn't play too much. I played a lot towards the end of the year into the playoffs with the Falcons. And then my second year, um, you know, the Jets had picked me up as a free agent. Okay. And I played uh, probably the last five or six games. I got some more experience. But I think going into this spring, you know, I gained a lot more confidence. Um, understanding and knowing the defense and I think you know training wise I felt very um, you know fit and ready to go I was never really fatigued or tired and you know I attribute that to you know my work ethic and you know my trainer who I've had um, for about a year now so it's been it's been a lot of uh, different factors that go into it but I think the main thing for me is just being confident playing confident okay now go ahead and give us um a day in the life of, of, of yourself, D Walls. <laughs> uh, pretty much in the off season, uh, I wake up and then um, I go to probably, I probably say about 8.30 I wake up and then I go to therapy or treatment uh, for uh, just some corrective things for my hamstring. Um, and then usually I would train before then or after, it depends on the day. But I train in the morning, um, sometimes I train twice a day. Uh, but uh, once I train, I eat, and I take a nap, and wake up, probably play PlayStation, and yeah. go train again, and eat again, and I'm asleep, and then I'm probably asleep by 10, 30, 11, because I'm so tired, but it just depends on the day, like, um, but it's pretty much busy, especially in the, uh, in the off season, because, I mean, I, I got a lot of time, but a lot of time is being put in, you know, to make sure I'm ready to go when I go back and uh, uh, start with the team. But when I'm in season, it's a total different, you know, schedule. I wake up 6.37 and we got meetings for three, three, two, three hours a day. Then we got practice and we got more meetings and we're there to about 7 o'clock at night and then it's all over again every day. So uh, it's a pretty busy schedule. Um, I stay pretty busy. It keeps me out of trouble too. Okay, that's good. That's good. Now, you know, Revis is now signed to Tampa Bay Bucks. Mm -hmm. And he's gone now, so would that be a Walls Island or, <laughs> or, 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 something, or something like it? Uh, I mean, that's in the work. That's in the making. Uh, hopefully, you know, I can come around and be a starter and contribute to the team. And uh, we'll see how that goes. But right now, you know, I'm just trying to go out there and make as many plays as I can, and we'll, we'll see how that goes. Okay. 
Now, some people might not know this, but your, first, your, your rookie season, your first season, you um, played with Atlanta Falcons. Right. So what's the difference between the um, Atlanta Falcons organization and the New York Jets organization? Um, they're both really good organizations. Okay. I think the head coaches are total opposite. Okay. When I was in Atlanta, I think Mike Smith was more of a, he was laid back, kind of chill. Um, he didn't really scream too much or just do, he was just very calm and relaxed. I think in New York with Rex, he's, he's molded, like he's, he's all around, he's running around the field, he's coaching in your face and um, I just think the atmospheres are two totally different atmosphere, although, you know, they're both business like, it's more, I feel like there's more fun in New York than there was in Atlanta, but not to say that it's bad or good, it's just, that's just the atmosphere that it was. Okay. Now, as far as the postseason last season um, that just went by, you know, it was a lot of reports on the news and everything like that, that the New York Jets locker room was dysfunctional. Do you care to um, <laughs> say anything about that? <laughs> yeah. uh, I don't think so. I mean, I think Rex gave all the players freedom to speak on how they feel. Um, you know, we're all grown men, so we got to be held accountable for what we say. And I think Rex have a really good control over the team. I don't think it's dysfunctional. I just think that a lot of people on our team have, um, they have their own opinions and they're very strong opinionated, I guess. So they voice those opinions and that's just, that's just the, the, the kind of team we are. Okay. Now, um, Tim Tebow. Mm -hmm. Now he's gone also. Yeah. He's going to the Patriots. Yeah. And the quarterback battle between Mark Sanchez and Geno Smith. Mm -hmm. um, who, who would you prefer as, as the quarterback to lead the Jets? Well, uh, I'm a defensive player, so <laughs> uh, I can only control what I can. I can control. However, I will say that whatever quarterback give us the best chance of winning the most games, then that's what I'm rooting for. If okay. whoever can come in there and you know make get us to the playoffs and get us to the Super Bowl, I'm all for it. But um, you know, I wish them best, both best of luck. You know, they're both really good, great, great, yeah. great guys, and um, they're really competitive. So I think that is going to be a good um, training camp for them too. Now, as far as your head coach Rex Ryan, you know everybody know he's been on ESPN, <laughs> sports, and everywhere. He's on the hot seat this year. Mm -hmm. So do you feel like it's a lot of pressure for you and um, the Jets to um, get the team lead them to the Super Bowl this year? Well, I feel like the first couple of years Rex was there, they made it to you know the AFC. Um, playoff championship game and I think that's the standard so I don't know if really a hot seat but I know it's more of a sense of urgency we went six and ten last year which is obviously isn't good enough but I think everyone has a everyone's more motivated to have a you know everyone's feeling like the fire's under them because you know six and ten just ain't good enough and we got goals and dreams of winning the Super Bowl and then that's the only thing we're playing for we don't play to go out there to lose we go out there to win and um I think Rex for that too. Rex, he said himself he wants to win the Super Bowl. So, I mean, that's all a goal. Um, I don't know. if it, It's not more pressure on me. I'm always going to do what I got to do. But, I mean, it is pressure. You you got to win games, and that's that's the league you win. It's either win or you, you know, you go home. Go home, yeah, exactly. Okay. Now, you know the Super Bowl this year um, is, is between New Jersey area and New York area. And it's going to be cold, cold. <laughs> and you're from up there. You're from what? Yeah, I'm from Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. You're from Pittsburgh, yeah. so. So what do you prefer, uh, what kind of climate do you prefer to play in Super Bowl? Cold Super Bowl, warm Super Bowl, indoor, outdoor, how, how, what would you be your dream Super Bowl? My dream Super Bowl is just to win. <laughs> um, okay. if, it's, if it happens to be outside this year, then you just got to play with it. Um, when I was in Atlanta, I was pretty spoiled because we played in the Dome and we didn't have too many games outside. Um, but. I mean, it really don't matter to me. I mean, it's always nice to be inside, but sometimes you get an advantage being outside, so it doesn't matter. Okay. Now, this next question is for the lady followers, and <laughs> you know, and, and the ladies, they asked me to ask you this question. Okay. You know, this is why I interview. <laughs> they want to know about D Walls. Um, are you in a relationship, and do they have a chance to be with you? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, the, I'm not in a relationship. I'm single. I've been single for a while. Um, I don't know why, that's just the way it's been. Um, I'm pretty much focused on football, but 
if someone happens to come along, I'm I'm open to digging. So okay, okay. Now give us some of the um explain us some of your techniques and your training that you do as far as getting you ready for the for the upcoming season because you know you trying to get that spot. You right. know. Well, I think it goes with a mentality. I think uh, my trainer, you know, he sets out a bar high for me, so I have to, you know, work up to his expect expectations and I, I really I have high expectations for myself so um, you know I don't want to let myself down yet alone someone else who you know wants me to do well so I, I go into every workout with the mentality that I got to get better every day and that's just that's just it like if I get better every day I feel like I can become a better player um, physically and mentally uh, so yeah every workout is just uh, you know intense I, you know I want to drain my body to where uh, when I get in the game, it's just like practice, or it's, you know, it's it's easier than what I've been doing. So that's that's the kind of training that you know I've been going through, and I think that'll it'll help in the long run. Now I have to ask you this question: When you was in college, you played for Notre Dame, and you didn't only just play for Notre Dame; you started several seasons for Notre Dame. Mm -hmm. So, how did you feel about the performance of Notre Dame when they played? Alabama in a national championship game, and you knowing that you couldn't put them the pass to go and do anything to help them, but just sit there and watch yourself. Well, I actually went down to Miami and uh, went to the national championship game, and I had a, I had high expectations for Notre Dame, and I I thought that they was going to pull it out. Um, but you know, Alabama's a good team. Um, Nick Saban's a great coach, and they always got NFL talent. So. I mean, Notre Dame, we ain't been to the national championship in 20 years, so I mean, I'm mean, i proud of them at the same time, but I feel like Coach Kelly has done a great job um, bringing the program back, and you know, that's just, the, that's just the beginning for us. I feel like now we're going to be a competitor every year um, to compete for the national championship, but yeah, it was a disappointment, you know, I expected more out of them, but you know, it's just a start, and Alabama's been there year after year, and they, they're, you know, that, that's their norm there. They're, experienced and you know they got the players to be there so I think um, you know we're on our way back. I'm on uh, Instagram my Instagram is dwalls d-w-a-l-l-s and my Twitter is dwalls 2 nd dwalls 2 nd Okay and you also can um, follow me at um, dreadboy21 and that's um Dread Boy is spelled with an I at the end of it. And also, you can go ahead and like my Facebook page at Dread Boy ENT. And um, I definitely appreciate you, man, for taking your time out your busy schedule to come out and have an interview with me, man, uh, Dread Boy Films, man. And go ahead and do your thing. Lock them down. Go ahead and pass over to, oh, yeah. you know, the lock down you know, corner skills. You like to play back in my, in my time. Okay. I hurt my feet. But um, appreciate you, man. And uh, go out there and do your thing. Thanks yeah. for having me. Appreciate it. All right, man. All right. Let's do it.